everybody. We have a guest. We have Dr. Kintade. We're together finally. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Finally. I know. <laughs> finally, we're together. I love it. Yes. Thank you for coming. I know you're a busy lady traveling the world. And a new author, of course. We just can't wait to hear all about it. But tell me, yeah, tell me how uh, how the beginning of your new life journey is. You have a new journey going on, right? Absolutely. It's been going great. And I say great, but I always want to make sure people don't think great means perfect. Right. So it's been going <laughs> great, really, really well. Um, you know, we, for those that I, I'm on the sabbatical, my family and I are taking a year long sabbatical. We're traveling to about 15 countries. We live in California and we've done New York, New Jersey. We're in Curacao. We're going to be in Aruba and we're going to be in Europe, Nigeria, and then Southeast Asia. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I don't think I expected that I would be, I would be defrosted so quickly. So that's one. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I did not anticipate that I would defrost because, yes. you know, I practice, I love GI. I was not burned out. I love my practice. I love my patients. I love my colleagues. So there was no bad reasons to leave. So it was, right, right. I was burnt out and could not wait to not be burnt out. But of course I was, you know, I was working pretty much full time. And yeah. so my schedule was busy. I had that. I'm a mom. I have money fit empty with do real estate. I have a socks line. Um, so things are, life is packed, not overwhelming. Right. And I think it was like one week or so into um, our time off, I was having a video call with my mother-in-law and she's like, you're glowing. And I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Deep you're process. glowing. You're yeah, glowing. Like, I'm that's, a, that's a lovely mother-in-law right there. Yes, that's yeah. a lovely I call it defrosting. She called it glowing. Oh, <laughs> the same. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us today. I I'm I want to hear about the, all the things, and you told us some about you. Is there anything about your background you want to share with the audience to start? Absolutely. I'm Dr. Yeah. Lakita. I'm a GI doc. I have three little ladies. They're ages five to ten, nice. and I'm the founder of Money Fit MD, which is a platform that is committed to helping women physicians be great at money so that they can live the life of purpose that they were created to in seasons because our purpose is going to change in seasons and what i don't want is this life that we're so accustomed to where women think they have to be stuck in a in a purpose for the rest of their life because they're afraid of what happens when they disengage and have to think about money. So my thing is, you know, I mentioned earlier that I'm on a sabbatical that I did not have a plan for. This was never on like the 10 year plan or five year plan or one year plan. In fact, this time last year, I didn't know I was going to take a sabbatical. This was literally an idea that we had towards the second half of last year. And to have positioned our finances in a way to be able to do that is a gift that I'm glad that my past self gave my current and future self. And so what I do with everything that I do, really, whether that's a podcast or my money community for women physicians or my book or my speaking opportunities that I get to do with hanging out with amazing humans like you. It's for that one purpose and one purpose only, which is to help women physicians live the life, the abundant life that they were meant to live without ever having to worry about finances. So that's kind of what I do. And my journey to that started not fancy. My journey to that started because I was the exact opposite of that. I knew zero about money. I didn't have the time or the conversations when I was growing up that was money centered. So for me, it wasn't until I was almost done with fellowship. At that point, I had two kids. My first kid was in residency. My second kid was in fellowship. And I had this aha moment where I'm like, okay, I love GI and my goal was to do GI forever till death do us path, right? <laughs> and I love GI. I also knew that I had a focus in inflammatory bowel disease, so Crohn's and colitis. And the best settings, in my opinion, to do that would be a large hospital system or academia. So I knew I was going to be working for someone by choice. And I wanted my staying there to always be by choice. I wanted to be able to take care of my patients 
um, activism in terms of equity and decreasing disparities in medicine is something that I've always loved to do. And for me, to be able to practice medicine and not think about the cultural context in which my patients come from and not being able to advocate for them because I work for someone was something that was not compatible with life, the way that I wanted my life to be. So that was the main reason why I'm like, okay, let's keep that. We have to figure out our money stuff so that we can always have the freedom to speak, the freedom to walk, the freedom to be. And so I started that journey out just to learn from myself and it wasn't until later on that I realized that there were many people that also were excellent clinically, but they hadn't taken the time or not found the right resources to help them become the CEOs of their finances. And so that was sort of like the quick story of how Money Fit MDs birth. And honestly, it's been the pleasure and an honor of my life to do what I do to be able to give to women in the way that I do, whether that's in my program or outside of my program. And my goal and my hope for your audience is regardless of what they do, regardless of their specialty, or even if they're not physicians and they're seeing your stuff, the mm -hmm. point is we are alive for a purpose. That purpose is gonna be changing depending on the season. And it's a disservice to ourselves, a disservice to our world when we're not able to claim that purpose because we're letting money be the limiting factor, so. That's I love I it. I love it. Okay. So then, and then you, yeah, so you offer many things, but let's talk about the book. So the book is super exciting because anyone could go grab it, take a wonderful vacation and just dive Ooh. into it. What do you hope? Like, what do you hope? Like somebody gets that book and it's the person that was just that stuck person that felt they had no, they don't have the, they don't feel like they have the freedom. Cause I do meet a lot of really smart people who have had a lot of degrees, a lot, a lot of degrees. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in this job. I can't believe, I can't believe. I'm like, well, where's your power? You know, so what do you hope someone goes to your amazing book that they leave with, they take away? Absolutely. My goal is what one of some, someone actually messaged me about the book and she said, I'm on page 40 and I've never felt understood as much as I did in a financial oh, book as I have written in a book. That's the best, right? yeah. So for me, I want our stories as women physicians to be seen. I want people to, I want us to understand that we're not anomaly because of the things that exist in our lives. I want us to understand the fact that who we are today is a reflection on our journey of our story through life so far. And that could be from our parents, from medicine like the beliefs we have i want us to understand that who we are today is it is what it is it is not our fault it's because not we're not like screwed forever like it is not our fault we're here because of the series of almost like passive things that have created who we are today and now it's time for us to become active and decide for ourselves who we want to be and so i go through all that in the book i talk about our story our story I talk about how we got here. I talk about the realities of medicine. I talk about things like how to actually have money. And you know, a lot, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to money and I address some of that in the book. And some of the ones that I see a lot of is, if I don't budget, I'm not gonna have money. Or I have to do budget in the traditional way in order to create money. And I address that, like, I don't like budget in the traditional sense of the word, but obviously that hasn't stopped me from creating the life and the finances that I want. So it's not about fitting into a box, it's about fitting the figuring out the path that's gonna work for us. So I talk about that in the book. I talk about things like the myth, of saving leading to having money. That's not true. Saving is not how you have money. Saving is not how, I'm gonna repeat that like uh, like 50 billion times. Investing is how we do, and saving is a means to that. And the reason why that's important for me to talk about is the fact that traditionally, a lot of financial education content that is geared towards women talks about budgeting and saving and cutting costs and cutting expenses, but we don't look i mean when we look at the one that's facing a lot of men in general it's more like investing rarely do they get approached by the whole budgeting stuff right and doesn't mean that budgeting is bad but the key is we are getting an incomplete story and it's time for that story to be complete by understanding that savings is not how we build wealth savings is not how you create financial freedom only it's going to be saving as a means to an end and the end is investment so it's things that are really practical like that um, so I'm hoping that they get that and so many other stuff that I share in the book. 
Oh my gosh. I love your passion. It's so infectious. You know, it's just like, yes, 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 yes. But you're right. Yeah. If we don't hear that often, and I, I know there's a, a little, there's a few more resources now for like med students and residents. Um, and, but so I think the message is out there a little bit, but yeah, there seems like it almost everybody needs a permission slip. Like it's okay to talk about money, plan your money. It is, it is related to your societal freedom. Right. And so I, unfortunately, I think like, it's not only about money. Cause my kids are always like, oh, I'm not capitalistic. I'm not capitalistic. But as they order from Amazon, you know, so I, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, you might be a little bit <laughs> when it works for you. You know, like I think. Um, so yeah, no, I'm so glad you're giving those messages. And I think, yeah, some people just need the permission, like go learn if this is important. These are the building blocks to have in place and exact, the act, exact path you get there will not be the same for everyone, but these are the absolutes. Yeah. Well, it, could you give us a story? Like you said that the person reading your book, and I'm sure you've had people in your program that have a story. You want to share a story, somebody who had just like an aha or a good success. I mean, it's like so many examples, but I'll, yeah. I'll share two for you. Okay. Thank you. And the reason why I'm going to share this first one is the importance of us not deferring our power to someone else. Right. Meaning that there are times when we think that this is, I'm a huge fan of delegating. I'm a huge fan of delegating, right? I'm like, I delegate like a boss and I want to always get to the next level of bossery and delegation, right? But the reason why we delegate is, and you know, if you're, there's a book that's going to be coming out soon. I don't know if it's out yet. That is by, at the time people are watching this, but it's by Ben, um, Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. They wrote Who, Not How and all those ones. This is going to be a powerful book. I read it. It's not out yet at the time of this recording. So people should get ready. It's going to literally blow things out of the water. But there is always this conversation about like 80-20 rule, right? It's 80-20 rule. And you can apply that to a lot of things. And in life in general, the goal is for us to find the 20% that needs us so we can delegate the 80% of stuff, right? And so I'm a huge fan of that. Your finances is not one of the 80% you delegate. <laughs> it is not. It is part of the 20% you delegate. And the reason why is because a lot of times we spend so much time, energy, and attention working in some shape or form to create the finances we have, right? And so when we de delegate the part of our lives that we're spending so much attention to, or we're using to get a lot of what our finances is doing, it's almost like we're not thinking about our lives energy, right? So I don't think that it's part of what we need to be delegating. Yes, there are gonna be partners, and I talk about that in the book, of how you can be CEO and you have people working for you, including an accountant, or it could be like a financial advisor. They're not your boss, they're part of your team, you're still the CEO. But it is so important for us to make sure that we're not delegating all that stuff that a CEO should be doing. And this first example is gonna to explain to you why. This is an amazing woman physician, who uh, started working with me a couple of years ago. And when she started working with me, it was sort of like, you know, okay, I'm great at medicine, badass, all my people are amazing, badass women physicians that you truly want to have money in their hands because they're gonna create a lot of good. And for her, it was like, I just don't feel like my finances are growing in the way that it should be going. And I know that if I can just get the information and steps and work on my mindset, I know that I have the potential to improve, but I don't know what to do. So we worked on it. And for her, I was literally on here one-on-one -on -one having a conversation with her when she realized the fact that she was rich. There is nothing like that. When a woman that. or a human in general realizes that she has the resources because of what we're, she's done, because of the mindset she the investing, and she gets it, it becomes a freedom to do whatever they want. It becomes like, what do you want to do with this life that you've been given? Right? right and that is everything like you mean i don't i can actually be myself i can speak the truth i can create time for my family i can decide the hours that i can work i can now decide like what my next layer of legacy is going to be and so that was such a it was just to i would never forget her face that uh, moment uh, sunk in and it was like she was quiet and she was like i do have money i have <laughs> investments i have all these things I'm diversified in this way, like, and the journey for her, I mean, it took her a couple of months for her to get yeah. to place to that, but right. it was, it was magical. So that was one example. And the reason why she did not realize it was one, she hadn't set things up. They were not organized, but also right. she had to 
referring to other people and didn't understand. And so she was not living a life of someone that had freedom because she thought it was going to take her like so many years. And it doesn't take crazy amount of years. I literally went from knowing nothing to, I mean, I didn't know anything about money seven years ago. So yeah. it doesn't take time. It takes intention, attention, and strategic yeah. ways of managing your finances, right? So it doesn't take a long time. So yeah. that was yeah. an example. Um, there's the second one that I can share as well, which is another powerful woman. I mean, like, uh, and uh, this is the honest truth. I literally, still yesterday, had someone that just joined my community, my my paid membership, and she was like, oh my goodness, the power in here. Because right. our power, like, it's crazy, we're amazing. So this right. is another woman, again, super power woman, just that's our baseline. And when she joined my community, this was like two years ago, she said, she messaged me and said, I actually don't have the money to join, but I know that this is going to help me have money. So I would like to invest, but I'm going to have to use a credit card. And she chose to, that was her choice. She chose to, yeah. and she did the work of learning. And that's the thing. These things are not hard. It just takes intention, retraining mm -hmm. and learning, right? How to differentiate between different things. So for her, the main thing was learning to really train our eyes and her mind to be able to separate between what's an asset versus what's a liability. And honestly, mm -hmm. knowing that deeply, not just superficial, like an asset is this, a liability is this, but knowing mm -hmm. what an asset is in her life, for her life, versus the liability in her life, for her life. She's, over the last two years, her work has been trading her liabilities for assets. And now she's like diversified. And I was just literally, so I'm, I was just literally interviewing her a couple of days ago. And she said that, her clinical income because she owns her own practice the mm -hmm. income had gone down because of some changes with insurance and mm -hmm. she said a couple years ago latifa this would have been a devastating event that may have led to me closing down my clinic but mm -hmm. now because of all the changes that i've made over the last two years it is not a devastating event it is an inconvenience because now i have multiple sources and i can weather the storm because i have the freedom of how i've set things up mm -hmm. and i literally sat down there like goosebumps all over me and this is someone that's a philanthropist right and because right. of the work she's done on herself and what she's learned and not just learn because people say like knowledge is power i say knowledge and action is power so she mm -hmm. learned and she executed and because of that she now is giving herself a gift and her nonprofit, which she's been spending a lot more time on now, is growing. And now because she's the CEO of her finances, that has now trickled into her nonprofit. And now she's able to partner with bigger people with in terms of like bigger monies in order to fund the good cause she has. And I'm just like sitting down <laughs> like wow. All right. Exactly. 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 Right. So those are two stories that come to mind because they yeah. emphasize the importance of knowledge and action. And action uh, it yeah. also emphasizes the importance of understanding our own power and not deferring our 20%, not being confused about what our 20% versus what our 80% should be. I love it. I love it. So what is the name of this amazing book? It is called Done With Broke, A Woman Physician's Guide to More Money, and less hustle because I that's what it. we need. Yes, yes, I yes. love and, it. So, and I love the name of the book. And I'll share a little quick story if you don't yeah, mind. About it. Please. And I, I'm sharing this because I think it's important for us to learn to do the work and start to increase our trust for ourselves. And yeah. also to start to understand that the stories we have about ourselves, about what we can or cannot do, what we're good or bad at can in fact be a story that can be changed and honestly my money story is a classic example of that i went from mm -hmm. thinking i was bad with money to being someone that teaches people about money about five years later right but there was a story two stories that i've had in my head for a long time which is number one i'm bad with writing and the reason why is because i have this memory of college years where i was literally in bathroom crying over like english writing papers because i'm like ah, how do i <laughs> like I had English classes and now I sat. I still got an A in the class, but I was right. in the bathroom. So my brain doesn't remember the A that I got in the class. It remembers the tears in the bathroom. So I've right. had the story in my mind that I'm bad with writing, but here I am writing, like authored a book, right? And right. so that story changed. Yes. Yeah. The other story that I had too was I was bad with naming things. 
I'm like bad with naming things. I'm bad with calling things titles. Like money fit MD. What's money fit MD? I should have had a better name for that. <laughs> like, my first kid, my third kid, we literally made up her name. And my dad was like confused by the name for a long time. Right. <laughs> so whenever I'm doing an event or I'm teaching something and I'm trying to figure out what to call it, I just ask people like, okay, well guys, this is, I know the content is great. It's going to be amazing. What should I call the title? So <laughs> that thought of that story of I'm bad actually trickled into my book. Right. Nice. Yeah. So the company that I published with, they helped with the title of the book. And the title was a really, really good title of the, yeah. of the not the current title. Oh, okay. But, yeah. And, but about after we had, they had decided and I agreed to the name of the book a couple of weeks later, what we were getting to the point of getting ready to like, hit our targeting for publishing, I just could not like, sh like whatever. I could not get over this feeling that this book didn't have the right name for it. Oh. And I was just like, but I'm bad. Like their, their job is to name books. Right. Like, <laughs> right. And me with my drama of I'm bad with naming books, I have the okay. audacity to be thinking that there's a better name. And I just had to learn to trust. And I sat down on a plane ride. I was coming from, a, I think it was a place that I went to go give a speak at, talk at. And I wrote down a list of the things that I names that I thought this book wanted to have. Cause I'm like, my job is to be the conduit to which right, this book right. comes to the world. So uh -huh. it's like, what is the name? And so I came up with a bunch of names and I messaged them. I was like, I'm so sorry. I know we passed the name stuff right now and <laughs> we're close to, but I cannot get over the feeling that this book should have a different name. And they said, well, you know, it's normal when you're close to publishing to have right. something, you're nervous. You know, you're nervous, maybe you're, it's completely normal. And I'm like, I love learning from people. And I don't think right, I'm the, right. you know, I have, you have to stay humble to learn it. And I was like, it's possible that that's a truth. But then I just was like, it's more than that. I don't think this is a name, the name of this book. And I was visualizing, I like visualizing things. And I yeah, was visualizing yeah. and thinking of the name of the book before, and the person who wrote the book, which is me, being introduced to a crowd or to a oh, stage. Right. Okay. And I love the it. person that walked on the stage was not me in my true self. The person okay. that walked on the stage is my old version of myself, which is someone that like people please, someone that was wearing a skirt oh, suit, right. someone that didn't say the word shit. I'm a freaking GI doctor. <laughs> shit is my, my <laughs> word. And I'm like, the name just does not it's not who I am now. It makes me go back to the person that I was oh, for all the work that I've done on myself. Yeah. So I tell them that, okay, I do think that this book, no, I think it's not whatever. It's not fear or anxiety. I think the book just has a different name. And so I gave them this name, which is Dawn with Broke. Um, right. They were like, well, you know, what about Dawn being broke? I'm like, no, my people are yeah. not necessarily broke. Right, it's a right. Broke mindset that we need to like get rid of forever and ever, right? Right, and the fear right. That that mindset leads to, and they were like, "Okay, let's if that's what you want, let's go with it." I was like, "Sure." I'm like, "Oh my goodness, there are the experts." I'm not, right? <laughs> and then I texted two of my friends, and both of them didn't like the names. <gasps> oh. And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> Arr, right?" And again, <laughs> With everything, and the reason why I'm sharing this for you, to, with you guys is not just to tell you the story, but there has to be, you have to listen and then trust, listen and then trust. And what I decided was that the question that came to my mind when my friends were like, well, done with broke, you know, was why is their opinion more valuable than my trust for what this book is trying to do and create in this world? And I chose to keep the name. And funny enough, both of them, they're my really good friends. They love me. And that's why they can be honest with me. Yeah. And both were like, now, weeks later, they're like, oh my goodness, we love the name. <laughs> right? Uh, so I love it. just keeping that in mind and just learning that we learn, but there's something about trust and there's something about changing our story and knowing that regardless of our past, we get to change our current and we can change our future as long as we're willing to get the tools that we need in order to be able to do that. Oh, well, I think you said it all. You said it all. You said it all. Let's just rest there. Yeah, that's like amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for spending our time. I'll have all the links in the show notes so you can buy the book and the socks and figure out all the programs. And thank you and have wonderful world travels. 
keep us posted. Thank we'll you. follow you. And, and thank you for all your hard work. I mean, you are literally changing the landscape for so many. And I think it will just trickle, you know, across the world, all your power. So thank you. And I know that takes, like you said, you have to trust that inner voice. And I'm, I'm grateful to know you. So thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. It truly is a pleasure to be here with you. And thank you as well for all you do. I'm cheering you on. Even if I don't talk to you one-on-one -on -one a lot, I'm rooting for you. And thank you for what you do for humans everywhere.